Let's TV is always excited about bringing you personalities that can share with us inspiring stories that touch and concern our spiritual lives, our community impact, and indeed the lives of individuals within our church, business community, and across the world. We did a first interview with him in July, and by popular request, he's back with us. Elder Samuel Nuff Love Smiley is back with us. Hello, Elder Smiley. Hello, Pastor. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Let me ask you the question that's on my heart. Where you get Nuff Love from? I got the name Nuff Love from the Jamestown community, 54 Lindus Road. And that happened about 2015, 16, thereabout. Mm. 2015, 2016. And they gave you the, the name because what? They gave me the name because of how I mixed and mingled and sought to help satisfy their needs in the community. And one of the major projects that I took on there when I went there, they had a communal bathroom and there was no running water. And actually they were using kegs to flush. And I said, no, that has to change. So I took that on as my major project. And I seek help and I got help. And I got them flushing toilets, running water and a urinal. And they appreciated it so much. I went even further than that to get them a thousand gallon tank should in case water left the community for any period of time they would have some water to continue use the facilities and not only that I helped them to clean up the community and got them involved and when they see how I took interest in their community infrastructure and into their lives we don't start about the ministering of the gospel yet just to help to satisfy and identify the needs they appreciated it so much. And usually when I speak to people, I would end the conversation with no love till they just adopt the name and start calling me no love. With all of those work that you would have done, you deserve the name no love for true. In our last conversation, Ellis Smiley, we would have focused on your family background, mm -hmm. your heritage growing up, what it was like, how you developed your entrepreneurial skills, right. what it was like for your parents as active participants in evangelism and mm -hmm. starting churches especially within the central jamaica conference area mm -hmm. and we would have looked on uh, touched at uh, just a little bit in relation to your small group ministry yes this program we're going to be focused on the twins of how you do small group and also your community impact yes so talk to us about small group ministries why is this so critical to, for you? Last time you focused on the dynamic of having at your business place this time where individuals can mm -hmm. come to study the word. And yes. through that, individuals have been baptized. Yes. Walk us through. Where did this love for small group develop? And why is it such an effective tool for you? For me... You will have to love people first before mm -hmm. you can reach to them in mm -hmm. any meaningful way. Now, I recall I should have dead, been held up by gunmen at my office. And I prayed to God. And no prayer is as sincere as that prayer when you're near death or you see death coming. Mm -hmm. I was listening for the sound of death and I prayed to God, if you see me through this, I'm going to serve him for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And he saw me through that encounter. Mm -hmm. And I pick up myself together and I say, you know, things I used to do, I must cease and desist and try to get involved and serve God. So my church had nominated enough community coming around, just like now. And they send paper around, what is it you'd like to be engaged Which in? Which church was this? Ken Cut Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I, and I wrote on the paper, I would like to be involved in evangelism. Mm -hmm. And so I got involved in evangelism through their training that they offer there. And this is something I'll just throw in as a little boost to churches, especially ministers and leaders in the personal ministries department. We should be training our members for evangelism mm -hmm. so that they know how to do it best and get more effective at doing evangelism. And so I learned about it, but I still did not see myself equipped to do it. Mm -hmm. So I merged with an elder yes. who was more experienced and confident than I could yes. and got involved. And also I offered my office to be used for small group ministry. I yes. observed, I retained, I learned, and I said one day, one day I would want to do it. You see, 
So as I, as I merged with Eldon Fitzgerald, my hobby, mm -hmm. I practice, I observe, I got involved, and I like what I saw. And I said to myself, one day I'm going to get back to my office to do it because I did it at his home in merging with him. So I'm just putting this as another booster. If you don't see yourself can do small group, you can merge with someone and it will be equally important, your contribution as a core member of that small group. So that is how I got involved in small group ministry. Well, let's look on some of the impactful programs that you have actually implemented with small groups. Share with us. Let's start with Johnson Town. Your Jamestown. Jamestown. Let's yes. start with Jamestown. Yes. And how you have actually crafted out a small group, successful small group mm -hmm. ministry there. Walk us through the steps yes. and walk us through the, the, the impact that it has had at Jamestown. Well, I learned from small group that it has a three prong approach to it. If mm -hmm. there is more yet to learn, but I'm still learning. It has this is 15 years doing small group yes, ministry. Yes, I learned that it has personal spiritual enrichment for both believer and unbeliever. Mm -hmm. I learned it has a community outreach to it section which deals with the needs of people mm -hmm. and also to a limited extent the needs of the core members. Mm -hmm. And I learned that it has an evangelistic affection, uh, uh, attachment to it, mm -hmm. leading people into a spiritual relationship mm -hmm. with their Jesus. So when I learned about that, and at, the, at that time in 2015, I learned also there was, a, there was a quarterly that was going around, study guide, which mentioned, um, which was captioned community. Mm -hmm. And when I studied that lesson, I realized, oh, Jesus did evangelism. It's foolproof. You can't help but be successful. He mixed, he mingled. Christ's he method, method alone, alone. will bring true success exactly. to to soul winning. Exactly. Christ mingled so with the people mix. as one that desires their good. Yeah, he sat, he walked, he had he listened to yes. people who were miracled with them. Yes. And when they saw him as someone who desired their best interest and good, they didn't have no problem in it where they bade them follow him. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I am gonna learn to try to do it that way. You see, and then I develop a mantra at my business place: business as usual, we business spoke about that. unusual. We spoke about that so I always time. seize the yes. opportunity to witness to my customers yes. when they come. But then again, I said I would love to get involved in a community. So I always drive past this community, and believe me, it drives terror passing. Because I always see the trope where a lot of men and women at the front of the community and they would ga gamble, I don't know if it's gambling because I don't stop to find out, but they're drinking and smoking yes, and so yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. But up to that point, I've been worshiping at my church for nearly 20 plus, 30 years and I've never gone into that community one time. I don't know if my church up to that point would have gone in there before me, mm. but I personally have not gone in. So at a board meeting, man, a Sunday morning like now, I asked at the time of AOB, by this time I would have done my little research, what number of the community is worship, uh, worshiping at the Kencott Seventh-day Adventist Church. And when I do my survey, it was less than 10%. Mm -hmm. And also in the, message, in, the, in the quarters lesson that I studied, we should stop eulogizing the members of our community and try to witness to them and reach them in their homes and streets and stop driving through the streets and avenues and lane to get to our church of worship and not stopping by their homes, their business places to witness to them. And I said, I want that to change. But I know my church would have sometimes a quarterly meeting in the street, but I felt that was still not enough. I know my church was reaching out with extra studies and extra lessons Sabbath night time, but I know that was still not enough. So I asked the question, are we satisfied that we are doing enough for our church? for our community and the burden of the answer was not forthcoming and I wasn't satisfied and my first Ella said you know Ella Smiley go and check out the needs of the community and bring back a report I stopped at the gas station I leave, left that meeting with a heavy heart and there's a gas station near to the community and I stopped there and I asked uh, the girl that attended to me and served me gas, I asked she, I, I ask her, how about that spiritual life with you? She said, Lord Master, that the one I need whole lot of overalling, whole lot of... I said, come to a small group meeting, you know, man, next door to the community, you know. I'm going to the community next door. And she said, I said, come to a small group. She said, somebody invite me at the same meeting, you know, I'm going to come. Okay, I got her number and I contact, you see. And I now get a little boost to go in the community. And I turned in the community. 
after I left the gas station. And as I turned in the community, I saw a man coming on his radio, only in his shorts. And I said, sir, I am Samuel Smiley from the King Cut Seventh-day Adventist Church. The first question that man asked me was this, was exactly as I studied in the quarterly, where is that church? <laughs> where is that church? He could not identify where is it. I said, right behind telephone company, National Baker King mm. said, oh, mm. that church where they keep Bogo funeral. He could only identify it with the funeral <laughs> service, stop eulogizing <laughs> the members of our company. I said to myself, yes, man, but that need to mm. change, you know? I love your community and I love the people here, man. If I have five shirts, I want to give away three. And four shoes, I want to give away two. I want to share whatever God bless me with, with the community. You see, not talking about gospel yet. The man turned off the radio and said, Come, come Charlie, come here where the man here say, Come, Charlie. And by the way, Charlie just died recently to be buried soon. Just died less than three weeks now to be buried soon. He was a second contact and Charlie was was a tractor driver mm. and he was receptive. I got two contacts so far with phone numbers. And Charlie was going to shop. Charlie said, come in, pilot, come here what that man here said. And pilot came. And pilot, these community people are very smart and observant, you know. You know, I was taking in the car license plate and I see first choice auto broker, you know, something that man has said one car years ago with me and my father. And him did treat me good. And him did name Mr. Smiley. Are you named so, sir? Me say, yes, brethren. This is one way in and one way out. Then the young man still remember. People will remember you for your kindness and your love, how much you cared. Years later, he's telling me this. And I don't remember him. I don't know him. So I got three contacts. And that is how I got started out in Jamestown. So three contacts started out. What happened after? And how did the program develop? You know, when I left that community pastor, the rain started to drew and I went home that Sunday evening. I said, am I ready for this? Mm -hmm. Am I ready for this? Can I really take on this? Mm -hmm. But this is an extension to small group ministry, community outreach, mm -hmm. trying to satisfy the needs of the people and identify with them where they are at their level in their space. Mm -hmm. Am mm -hmm. I ready for this? So I mm -hmm. called my sister. In Spanish town, she works with Sister Sister Banzi and Pastor Everett Smith, then who is a community specialist. She said, No worries, said when I come over. And they come over, Pastor. I get a boozy seat. Remember, <laughs> man, she come with me in the community with Sister Banzi and Pastor. And they do health check and so on and so forth. I get 35 names plus many testimonies. You see, and I feel encouraged. I'm doing the right thing. I'm off for a good start, a great start. So I come with a powerful report to tell my board members what has happened since then. And you know, from one thing to the other, we, we provided lunch for the community and start to mix and mingle. And I say, you guys going to see a lot of me now coming on and I'm not leaving you. Them say, I saw enough pastor come in here and talk and say, they might come back and we don't see them. Well, praise God. It's seven years and they are seeing me at least twice per week. And not only that, we have had many baptism and even a marriage. Let's go through that. Mm -hmm. How many, ab ab approximately about how many persons have been brought to Christ by virtue of this small group in, the, in, that in that community. In that community, yes. about 12. About plus 12. one marriage. And one marriage. Yes. And so far, you would have been in Johnstown over... Jamestown. Jamestown. Over, over, uh, over seven years. Seven years. Yes. So walk us through the incubation process and period. Mm -hmm. Because a small group ministry does not yield results immediately. No. It does so no. over time. Over time. Give us a little insight into <coughs> what are the, the, the signposts, what are the things that indicate to us that... Well, Pastor, as I continued to go in the community, and this is something I learned from on the job, doing small group, mm -hmm. don't visit people, whether a community or a person, they see you in the heat of the moment when you say you're going to go on the mission, and they don't see you back for months. Mm -hmm. You have to follow it up. Mm -hmm. They don't, they're not supposed to long to see you. So consistency, so consistency follow, up. follow up, and don't go empty-handed observe as you go around look at the children look at their space where they live in look at the house look at the road look at the other persons next door that's make like, yourself sociable that's not like it, it, it takes some money to um, of course it money. costs money 
Then the money you God give you or me is not our money. It's loan to us. We are stewards. And as he bless us, we must be a channel through which the blessing flow to people. Mm -hmm. You see. And as people hear of your testimony and see what you're doing, you won't have to tell them to give. I will tell you this. Remember at that time, the small group meetings were held at my office, not in the community. Yes, correct. So I would invite those names and contacts who have gotten to strive a connection and to bond with them. Then to lead them to my small group where the pro proclamation of the gospel will be taught. And but, but teach. Smiley, I don't want you to just jump over the contacts and the interests because you have a, 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 a board on which you keep the names yes. and the number. Tell us about that. And what does it do in t to, the, to the small group ministry? to keep that form of a record and interest list? Well, in my small group ministry, there's a five-prong approach, credit to Pastor ba Dr. Balvin Byam, mm -hmm. a five-prong approach which I learned, you see, and I practice it in the book called Evangelism, Contact, mm -hmm. Connect, Bond, Proclaim, and Nurture. I practice those principles. I program them in my head. So the contacts I got there, 35 and more, right. I try to make a connection with them mm -hmm. and bond with them mm -hmm. with an intent to proclaim the gospel to them. Mm -hmm. So the small group ministry was a platform already in motion that I would want them to come and be a part of. Mm -hmm. So I entrust them into coming and who said they would come, I make arrangements to pick them up and carry them to small group ministry meeting to teach them the word of God. And That's it so was, like it was some distance away from them walking. It is not very far and it's not exactly near, but not, it's walking distance. But because our meeting would be held in the night, we wouldn't want to put them at risk. Mm -hmm. So I would have myself pick up or someone to assist me in picking them up. And that is also something that is important about small group. People would want to attend and because of transportation issues, they may not get to come. Well, now with the facilities of Zoom, it makes it a little more convenient. But the direct person at contact to contact, like we are in this view, interview, it has a more impacting impression, you see, and inspiration to the person seeing you in your in presence, sharing the word, helping them to find the scripture verses. They listening and hearing the testimonies. They watching other persons in the meeting and building up their confidence. And one of the things I will tell you happened: some come remain silent, can't speak, mm -hmm. and they leave speaking out in this format. Some can't can't even read properly and some end up reading you see so i find that this small group ministry thing is a very so it's good much more than just a spiritual impact program it is a social intervention certainly and so maybe even a remedial program certainly because if persons are learning to read yes if persons are learning to engage and utilize other skill sets apart from spiritual yes. values you are not just doing something for eternity you're doing something in time. Yes. What is guiding you and motivating you? Because to do this consistently for seven years at Jamestown, 15 years overall mm -hmm. in small group ministry is significant. Mm -hmm. Something, this is almost a full-time job for you. It is. And I will tell you that, Pastor, as you mentioned about full-time job, my time is not wasted. Many times I go during work time, work day. And I say, I just going to spend one hour and go in James and come out. And I end up spending half day. And guess what? When you put the Lord's business as your first priority business, the Lord take care of your business. Long time, but his faith, we don't have to believe it will go. So, business Matthew 6, 33, and also business as usual. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. And business as usual, business unusual. Many times I've proven it. Guess what? I was in the community and little T is a member of the community. He burn his ganja and smoke and little drink. Tea? Little T? Little T. And I call in his name because he's my friend. He has been with me to church already. Mm -hmm. And he is a working project. He's a project in, in work on, on a construction. One day, someday I'm hoping and I know by God's grace he's going to come. But little T, he went to Portland. I don't know what about his idea, but he said, you have a scandal bag, no love. One evening I went there. I said, no. He said, get one and give me. And I got one and give him. About one o'clock, 
And I got him. When I look in the bag, a very big breadfruit. Yeah. Him said, boy, the breadfruit was too pretty down there. And I only think of you. You yeah. carry one. <laughs> no, listen. This was about one o'clock. I went to the office and I roast the breadfruit, man. Mm -hmm. And customers were on the lot. And while I was showing a customer some trucks, the customer said, is what me smell so like breadfruit or roast? Yes. I said, yes, yes, man, it's breadfruit roasting. He said, a long time me would have eat one piece of breadfruit. You know, you know, so me not eat no lunch. And he and his wife dress nice, look nice like a pasta in your outfit. It's what I you couldn't say. believe. It's what and the say. man asked me for the breadfruit piece. I said, yes, man. But he said to my worker, the breadfruit soon roast them mark. He said, yes. Okay, we peel the breadfruit and give him a quarter. Believe it or not, the man started to eat the breadfruit and give his wife peace. And I had peace too. The breadfruit didn't even need butter. Portland breadfruit, nice. And we enjoyed the breadfruit together. It was a yellow, huh? Yes, man. Soft and nice. nice. And See. you know something, this breed said, give him the other quarter. Make him get half. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I said, don't waste. He said, waste. And I can waste it, man. You know, the long and short of that breadfruit, we end up making the seal. Get the seal, yeah. liquor tea, breadfruit, help you make the seal possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James Stone. I have countless rewards of going in that community, not only in baptism, but out mm -hmm. of appreciation. One and two people have Aki tree in there. A, a, a gentleman have a yam plant behind the renter yam, and he dig the yam in James Stone and give me a piece to carry. It was to another nice piece of renter. Aki, they reap Aki and give me. People appreciate you. There's a little man there sometime when he's me say, Me love what you're doing, man. And another lady, Samarine and brother Chini and, 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 and Scotty and many others. They give me little appreciation. A bottle of Malta or water. Just to show appreciation. And guess what? It doesn't cost much to go in there, Pastor. Right. Sometime I go in there. I go to country and I get a jackfruit and I say, wait, they, somebody give me this big jackfruit. Do you have another one can sell me? It's James on my mind, you know. Yeah. A jackfruit I carry in there, I cut up. I remember I went to St. Anne's Exchange Church and we shared lunch after a presentation down there and some persons were at the home and I just sharing with them just like I sharing with you here. And the lady said, you know, I have a lot of pumpkin I would love to give you because I don't want to market for them. I said, okay, I'll give you something towards your pumpkin. And she make her in me and send up the pumpkin. I bought bags and cut up, peg up those pumpkin and carry them and deliver them to James Stone. Mm -hmm. Cut up the jackfruit, the mm -hmm. children ate it. Mango, simple little things. You don't have to have excessive amount of money passed, as you mentioned. It costs a lot of money. Yes, it costs money, but do what is within your scope to do. And it will show the level of interest. And people will appreciate it. And the children too. Suppose you get an extra little money. You can buy a box of ice cream and share it with the children. They will appreciate you. When the children see me coming in James, or no fluff, no fluff, run my foot, and so on and so forth. It is so rewarding. It's just something I can't see myself not doing. You understand? But Ella Smiley, in as much as you are effective at doing this, I'm sure you would agree that it takes others affiliates yes help, yes um, partners yes to get it done certainly how do you infuse partnership support in small group ministries and community projects because there are a lot of churches that are not able to infuse the amount of capital or human resources for one reason or the other to make small group ministries successful so you have to rely on partners or you have to rely on friends whichever you have what are some of the how, how do you go about doing that i will help you pastor yes now this is gospel yes the lord has blessed me and i use some of my resources but it's not altogether mine mm -hmm. now you must get every opportunity you get you see my mouth becomes the mouthpiece for the lord's work so it's not only for my business I have to use my mouthpiece to do the Lord's work. You follow what I'm saying? So as I do the Lord's work, the Lord will take care of your work. No, I, I, I did, I did a, a sale for a particular person. And when I, when I, when I returned the person's um, proceed and my commission was paid to me, and the, person's, the person was to come and pick up his, her license plate, I was in Jamestown, but before I went, when I, before I went there, I had witness to her and showed her even some photos of what I was doing in this community. And believe it or not, Pastor, I was in the community some weeks later, and she came and picked up her license plate. 
and my secretary told me that she left an envelope for me. She paid me my commission already, you know. And when I look in the envelope, it was $40,000. I didn't budget for that. I didn't plan for that. Another lady, I don't want to call her name as well, but mm -hmm. $15,000, okay. $20,000, it come. I do a lot of witnessing and people loving people program, Pastor, Pastor Bra Fitzroy, Fitzroy Bailey, Bailey and Lord. And people hear the testimony. They don't know me. They don't even see me. And people call through their inspiration, get my number and mm -hmm. send money through Western Union to give me to for Jamestown. You see, my so sister, partners. my sister, core members, people who just see and hear clothing, food, barrels of clothes, they just keep coming. These are just true tell signs that God is with me in this community. It's not about me alone. It's the core members, my wife, my daughter, and all the persons who baptize through small group. We become mm. like a tight-knitted family interested in this community. Yeah. Only yesterday I was in Trenchtown and some of them were with me yes. in Trenchtown ministering. And when the people who I minister hear and see that these are some of samples of the people from where I am doing ministry in this community, it is more impacting. And our churches must give more time for the testimonies of people who are being witnessed to, yes. so that they will tell a story that I can't even tell. And when people hear the story live and direct from who is beneficiaries of the stories, that we are doing in the mm -hmm. mixing and the mingling, it will certainly do a lot more to get involved. So partnership, I'm saying, is important Certainly. to you. L Certainly. Let's take a look on some of the challenges within the communities or, or, and or the families yes. where we impact with small groups. Because a lot of these families, yes, do have social needs. Mm -hmm. But there are others that are not, that are okay. Yes. You know, they, they can be able to survive. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the challenges you face in the community itself and in the families, with the families that you this are working This is a with? very good question, and I thank you very much for this question. And one of the major problems I find with the community is conflict resolutions. Mm. The middle not talking mm. with the top, and mm -hmm. the top not talking with the bottom, yeah. and the bottom not talking with the middle, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. see. And this provides for a, a serious indifference in how they relate to one another. Mm -hmm. No one can suck me into their vacuum. I am for every one of them in the community. And sometimes, Pastor, uh, for example, they may see me speaking to you, and the cameraman see me speaking to you, but because they don't like you, they don't call to me, and they don't have nothing to me with me. So down the road, when I read a call to me, I, I always call to them when I'm speaking to you direct. You see, so when I'm speaking to the mid left down the bottom past me, and don't say, hello, call to me, man. I'm your friend, same way. Mm -hmm. You see, so I try to neuter neutralize this. Yes. And I see where indifferences have caused children to be motherless. Death, you see, I've witnessed that. Mm -hmm. And this is serious. Mm -hmm. They need to learn how better to reason and be in a mood and mindset and attitude of reconciliation and we can talk about this mm -hmm. we don't have to work it out so viciously mm -hmm. you see so the little boys are there right now without a mother you see and this is one of the major major problem i see in this community along with other social needs yes but this aspect of social intervention where mm -hmm. conflict resolution Mm -hmm. is not treated with the priority it deserves. We're losing the fathers and the children are losing their parents. And children are growing up to see how indifferent mother and father can be with the neighbor and with the other neighbor. You see, and have no respect for their seniors. In respect to this aspect of um, conflict and, you know, how individuals fail to deal with it, is it an open door? Would you invite church leaders to say, let us look on our approach to family ministries in the community. Yes. Let us consider something with the community um, services department to see how we can help families to deal with conflicts. Do you think that this is an open door for the church or do you think this is just something that can 
re that is resident at James Town. It is not resident at James Town. It's right across our nation. You see. And to a lesser extent, I will say, even in our churches, mm. it is unfortunate to say it like that. But it's true because some members not talking to some members and we're worshiping under the same physical roof, which is not good. So don't feel no way if it is in the community. Mm -hmm. But it's just that they play it out very viciously yeah. sometimes. But you know something, Pastor, I will tell you this. I know God ordained me to be in Jamestown. Trust me. I have neutralized a lot of situation that could otherwise mm -hmm. be a headline in Jamestown. I remember a specific instance, and I the well, person, a specific instance. We're, we're gonna take a break. We're talking with Elder Samuel Smiley, otherwise known as Nuff Love, Seventh Day Adventist pioneer in more eras than one, business entrepreneur, but a definitely a small group enthusiast, sharing with us his impact in the jamestown community not just with small groups but also with other community outreach impacts we'll be right back with you with elder smiley after this break no love right you no love god saying give god thanks right there the best man ever no joke god did this give god thanks again no love we appreciate you all the time. Yeah, no love. No love. We boss that. We should have been with MP still because they man come and change the place. You see, build up, sink down there, give you a tank. And you know, say, no love. We out here, straight from out of Jamestown. No love is a nice man to us. He cares for us very much. He always look looking after everybody like the children and other people he's a nice man i love him very much he do very he do enough things for us in this community care food and stuff and those things i love him very much he's a good person to us in this community enough love Sometimes you feel down, and when him come, when, before him reach to you, you have to smile. Because the warmness when him come with you, you have to start to smile. Even sometimes when I tell him, say, I come at church, him not give up on you the same way. Him not show you in a face the same way. All when you trick him and say, me I come Saturday, and me not come Saturday, I still come and say, me still, me still, I tell him not to come, because I know one day when we go and come. Mm -hmm. Enough love is a joy in the community. I always say enough love, say, is you must be the, um, MP. the MP for the community because you do a lot of things for us. You're full with belly. Sometimes when we, we're really in need and we don't call you and tell you nothing, you come with the thing that we're in need. And we're so grateful. And you do a lot for my mother. When we couldn't do, you do it. When my brother them couldn't do at the time, you come and you play your part. And I thank you very, 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 very much. Very much. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We just want to tell you, tell Brother Smiley thanks for what he has been doing and what he's continuing to do for the community. This man has been uplifting the community by giving us water tanks. People already said that, but I just want to say, because them said more than one people say something, it's the truth. This man give a water. So that's the kids, them all right. And for your love kids, the Bible says, suffer the children. And for them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And for your love kids, God will love you also. So I just want to tell Smiley thanks for what he has done. And his wife also for joining him in the ministry that he's doing. And not only here, but other places. You understand? And they can talk on their behalf. So we're just speaking on our behalf, what we know of. You understand what I say? So as we say, no fluff and holy people love Smiley. And may the goodness of the Lord go with you, keep you, not only you, your wife and your daughter, your whole family. You understand what I say? So give thanks for life and give thanks for smile because he's a good man. And may the blessing of the Lord go with him all the days of his life till he reach home to his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Holy power love. This is Blessed TV, bringing to you some of the most insightful stories in Seventh-day Adventism across the entire Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. We are picking up on the stories, rich stories, um, relating to small group community intervention with Mr. Smiley. 
Enough love, Ella Smiley, Samuel Smiley, businessman, car salesperson, known in the Kingston metropolitan area, in the business first choice. And you, you may have known him uh, from being here on Bless TV, and he is back with us. Before the break, Ella Smiley, you wanted to share with us a story. Certainly. Yes, because Certainly. we're bringing out the stories of your intervention in... Yes. James, James Town, Stone. small groups yes. and community yes. impact. And as I was about to tell you, Pastor, my presence there is ordained of God. And it's an intervention that diffuses what could otherwise be making headline in the media. And I had an encounter coming from church, drop off my little flock that came with me from to church from the community, and saw a little gathering, a little crowd. What was it? One of my friends there was at the heart of it. And another guy was saying, mm -hmm, guess when me done this a phone call, you more you deal with more your face where judgment I'll reach you. When I look, when I look, is that is that it? and hear my little friend talking some wicked talk back to the same person. Mm. What was it about? A little buffer? And $1,000. Now, coming out of Jane Phone, that seems about people always ask me from time to time for money. And I have about $1,500 in my bill. And I say, I'm not giving nobody no more than this $1,500. But when I hear this fiasco over $1,000 and the threat, and I know that if a man says, I'm making a phone call, I hope you can manage the excitement where I come down for you. you know? And I say, Really? Should I? I went in my vehicle and passed through the fiasco pass and I ignored. And I start the vehicle and the Holy Spirit said to me, you're going to go home and wait and see headline, make a gemstone where you never have no intervention. You're crazy. I switch off the vehicle and I came out back. And I go in my billfold and take out the thousand dollars and I say, in the name of Jesus, under heaven and on earth, no blood now run a gemstone today. If I have a thousand dollars seat here. And I go back to my friend and I say, hold this. And he said, move from there, no flow. I said, you don't want to get involved in our people. Love people, business, making go find the money, give me. And I put the money in his pocket. And I went over to the other guy he was having a fiasco with. And I said, Bridget, you borrowed the man, buff, buff him. And he started to class the guy. I said, no, no, big man thing. This minute, in a class, he talked to me. And me and you want to hold a little rent. You borrowed the man, buff him. And he said, yes. I said, all right, you borrowed him. Yeah, you owe him a thousand. He said, yes. I said, well, all right. We are going to reconcile that. See? I put him money in his pocket and whatever. I'm bridging while I'm talking to him. I'm praying in my heart that it would be resolved. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. The guy could even move because the, my friend had chained up his bike wheel to a whole car in the community and he couldn't move. And that is what the big problem about. And while I was talking to the, man, the guy who owed him the money and the buffer that he loaned him, my bridge went over and but now and pulled the combination of the wheel and the bike wheel return back to normal and diffuse the problem. Everybody clap and I too felt good that I obeyed the spirit mm -hmm. and come back and help to diffuse that problem. Half a tree police and nameless inspector up there is my friend. Tell me. When I tell her of some of the things I'm doing down there and talk to her, she said, you know something, brother Smiley? You know, so we're getting less report that from that community. In the time past, in many time past, as fast as we send on a radar car, we have to send back down another one because of the conflict in the community. Mm -hmm. So the presence helped to make a difference. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I know for certain that particular Sabbath, my presence made a difference. Ella Smiley, there are a lot of persons who are young men on in these communities mm -hmm. they're unattached young men some of them may not be in school or finish school and are just waiting for some form of opportunity yes. what has been your experience with these young men and how do you think as a church we can reach out to them help them to get back on a path it doesn't have to necessarily be formal schooling mm -hmm. it could be skill stream it could be other areas of it what are your suggestions to local churches, to local leaders, to help with redeeming, so to speak, mm -hmm. these young men. Not only young men, the young ladies and the children, you see. And sometimes the young men, they just need a little encouragement. I don't pass them. And I, when I see them gathering and what have you, one mother, I remember one mother tell me how much struggle to go through to send her little boy to mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And she would to gather him to come out and smoke ganja and drink. And she, mean, she told me one day she went to work and her friend meet her before mm -hmm. she come in the community and say, Daughter, you know, if you worry, me see him with me wound and I make him wound ganja slip mm -hmm. and smoke yeah, it. And she yeah, said her heart yeah. was broken. Yes. You see? Mm -hmm. And I see young men. 
young young under 10 year old that see me and i remember a particular instance a young man come from school and he was looking neat and clean and i encouraged him what you didn't get teacher any trouble she said no <laughs> you were attentive you didn't play mm. he said no i pay attention to school and i said what do you want to be when you go and he said he want to be a minister he want to be a christian and go to heaven and from that day i get attached to that little boy you see and it so happened that he told me he wanted to get baptized. And when he ready to get, was ready to get baptized after I worked with him for some time, the mother was the obstacle, you mm, see. Mm. And I prayed and see him on that platform with my core members. How old from, was he? Ten? He was nine or eight or nine at the mm. time. And the mother stood in the way. And I prayed and asked God mm -hmm, to help mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. that not only him mm. would get baptized, but the mother who obstructed it. Come on. You understand? Come on. And I prayed and I and people loving people. When I share the testimony, I say, all oh, those have people loving people online and overseas and wherever. Pray with me that it yes. will become a reality. Yes. You see? And it became a reality. Not only him baptized, Praise the mother God. and the grandmother Praise get God. baptized. Yes. You see, the grandmother was in church with me yesterday. So intervention were you see. So, you, you, your conflict resolution skills in some of these things. One of the things that I'm picking up from what you're mm -hmm. saying, when you go into this, into this community or, um, or these communities as you work in others as well, you ensure that you keep yourself in good relations with everybody. Everybody. Even if they don't have good relationship with each other. No, that's right. And that is important. Without prejudice that and partiality. That is important. Without prejudice and mm -hmm. partiality. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. The children don't have that kind of animosity like the bigger people in the community. Bigger when ones the carrying children, on generations. When the children see me come, they run, Uncle Nuff Love, Uncle Nuff yes. Love. Guess what? You not talking to him and him not talking yeah. to him. All of their children run around my foot and run come meet me. All of them bungle up together meeting me. But yet still you not talking to she and him not talking to So you to are a source so of community. So neutral, I neutralize all yes. of that. You yes. see, because they can't tell the child not to talk to the other child and leading the child to keep malice with children. And mm -hmm, as child and mm -hmm, child, you mm -hmm. see. So it helped to neutralize my presence, helped to neutralize all of that, you see. And I, I help to bridge people who are not talking together to talk together. That's right. So the young men, and I speak, reach to them and I speak to them, what do you want? How can I help? Yes. Pay attention in school, you know, teenagers, yes. you know. You see, you don't want to come out and do, make the best of school. This is an opportunity that you can have to pay for less later. Mm -hmm. Make the best of it now. Mm -hmm. So right now, man, they will have little free time at hand. So what do you want? We want a football. I'll get them a football. And all of them work together and play their little football in the community. And I watch them and I encourage them. And after that is book. You see, they take their book and they encourage, I encourage them. What happened? How is the grades going? How is school? You paying attention? Yes, man. Pastor, me now come out and make good grades. You know, me want to be somebody. Me said, this community have no legacy on chain over you. You can rise and soar above. They did say, Baba, Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of James? So, no flop me. Me go make a line, man. Good headline. Me want to be a star at whatever I am about to do in school. And you help them, motivate them. And if you have a little pocket money, encourage them. Ask them to show you the book and see what is it they are doing as well. And if they need help to buy a book, a notebook, help them. You see, so when you show this level of interest in them, and the parents know, and the child know you're interested, they circle up when they see you coming. And they will respect what you are doing, and you must keep at them. You don't, you don't bring it to that level and leave them. You don't want to see them back for the next two, three months. We have to be consistent. So that's, my, that's why I have to go every week. So, uh, enough love. Listening to you make me wonder if you have a job. Otherwise, now what you're doing, you boy, because this sounds like... No, I'm telling, listening to you, and I'm saying, this is time-consuming. You're right. It's many times I am in Jamestown, you know, and sometimes I go to, as I said before, I spend a hour, I end up spending half the day. I remember one time the secretary, just before I reached to the, oh, to the entrance to leave back to my vehicle, my phone ring. Who called me? My secretary. I was just about telling them, you see, oh, no, hold me in the community because somebody always want you to, want to, to, you to lend them the hear. Somebody always have something to pray for. To talk about or to explain to you about Tom and Harry and you need to spend time to listen to them. Mm -hmm. So the listening is very important. So as I listen, I'm able to give some counsel mm -hmm. and advice about the situation. So when I plan to spend an hour, I not spend three, four. So I was about to go out. And my secretary called me. How far are you, Mr. Smiley? I said, I'm not very far. What is it? Somebody is here waiting on you. A decision needs to be made about a sale. 
I was just about telling them, you see, oh, no, I mean, I come to you long, I'm stay, keep me away from my business. The phone ring. God, take care of your business long before, you see. <laughs> and when I went around, when I go around, man, it connect the sale, connect the man, look at the thing already before and come back, want to finalize. Guess what? You must have faith to trust the Lord. If you put little in the work of the Lord, guess what? God is so merciful that he still bless us. But guess what? You put in much, you get much out too. And that's my experience. That's my lived experience. You see, I learned of a situation, you know, where a mother was killed before her nine-year-old daughter. And they were not living in Jamestown. They were living in the General Kenkat era and Central where the mother got killed in front of her nine-year-old daughter. The daughter ended up coming to live with her uncle in Jamestown. You see, when I learned about the situation, what would come on any conscious person's heart? Christian or no Christian, no most compassion. And when you look at the little nine-year-old, you see all the innocence. When I heard that she was messing up herself even before, but during walking out of her sleep before the burial, she, she messing up herself. The trauma of the child can't sleep. So I seek professional help from the government for her and intervene, intervene. But I said, I want her to get back in school. But, but a Smiley, I, 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 as, as, as we wrap it up, a lot of individuals who are watching this mm -hmm. are not in the position financially that you are. They are, persons might themselves be struggling, mm -hmm. but they have a desire yes. to be involved in community projects. Yes. They have a desire to be involved in a small group initiative or in a soul winning endeavor. Help the persons who don't own businesses who don't have access to the network, mm -hmm. who don't have the financial capital and know, know, how, know how to, like you do, to find a space to be able to do or to have the impact that you're having today. I'm going to go spiritual and come back to literal and practical. You think the woman at the well did have the, all the resources <laughs> when she go back to the city square to her bend them where she used to flirt with. Take time you with see, us, man. You think she did have all the resources yeah. when she go back to them with that yeah. changed woman, a reformed, transformed yeah. person. What she said, come see a man. Mm. She never all the resources. And all they were fostering mm. and blundering, wonder what kind of man she had called if you can see and we don't whatever with her. Come see a man. She just made sure she introduced them if you come see a man. In the community, you don't need to have all the resources. You need to have the desire and the interest. Sin start with that desire. So if you have the desire to seek out <laughs> the welfare of good of someone, you just need to have the desire. You see the need. Yes. And you can't have the money to you don't have the money to satisfy it. Guess what? God will lead you to somebody who have the money, all the money is belonging to God. And will lead you out of the compassion and pity and mercy of your heart to the person who have the money. To satisfy the need, all you would need to do was to see the need, be in the community. And guess what? Is not money satisfy all the needs in the community. There's a finger to pray for. There's a eczema on people back and side to pray mm -hmm. for. There's mm -hmm. someone who gets stroke. There's mm -hmm. relational problems that people need encouragement mm -hmm. and counsel. Mm -hmm. You don't have all the resources. I don't have all of it. I seek help. Mm -hmm. And I've sought people who are interested in evangelism and mm -hmm. desire to be of help mm -hmm. to people. You just need to be where the needs are, identify mm -hmm. the needs, and God will lead you to the source of fulfilling and satisfying that need. A uh, very important conversation we're having with Elder Samuel Smiley, <laughs> one of the small good specialists here in the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. With over 15 years' experience in this particular era, he has proven himself to be one of the single most powerful voices in the Jamestown community, helping and impacting lives in more ways than one, spiritually, financially, educational-wise, and also in helping to build up the esteem of many young men and women. To close, we're going to ask Elder Smiley to share with us what are the key ingredients for a successful small group ministry. Elder Smiley, how do you see the ministry of small group being successful irrespective of where you are? The top three secrets. The top three. First one, you have to love people. Love people. Second, you have to be committed Commit your life to God and commit your life to ministry. And thirdly, 
you have to seek the intervention of God through his Holy Spirit to lead and direct and teach you, mm -hmm. to inform you, to, in, to inspire you, and to use you as an influence yes. to impact the lives of yes. people. And meeting the needs of individuals means that you will have to dig deep into your personal resources, not yes, just financial, definitely. but your time, definitely. your effort. Definitely. Those are things that you have given consistently over time. Thank you very much, Ella Smiley, for sharing with us It's today. a pleasure. It's, it's a, a pleasure. pleasure. I want to thank you for joining with us on Bless TV. When we share, where we share with you interviews with individuals who can inspire your spiritual journey, enrich your ministry experience, and definitely help in winning souls for Christ. This is our second interview, second sitting with Ella Samuel Smiley. And this interview, we would have focused on his community intervention and impact, and also the success of the Jane, Jamestown um, Small Groups Ministry. We want to thank you for joining with us. We invite you to share the link. We invite you to share the word and to tell a friend, Bless TV is here and you can be a part of it. Catch the vision and join the mission. I'm Omar Oliphant on behalf of the producer, on behalf of our technical staff and our cameramen. We want to say thank you. See you next time.